Belgium's recent decision to legalise euthanasia for terminally ill children has stoked fierce opposition across Europe. While some accept the move on humanitarian grounds, others believe it could be abused by parents. RT's Margaret Howell reports. First the Netherlands and now Belgium, two countries where the killing of children can now be justified in law. In Belgium, doctor-assisted suicide is now available to anyone of any age. Theoretically, sick children as young as one or two years old can be helped to die if it's decided their suffering is too much to take. Although even for many parents who've seen their loved ones waste away in pain, the mere idea is just too much to contemplate. Children don't know what euthanasia is. It's an invention of adults. Parents, if they are parents, I think they should do all they can to delay the, the moment of this. Bruno lost his 14-year-old daughter, Audre, to leukemia, and she said she wanted to hold on to all the time she could. She wanted to live, and then she died. She died in, in, in the arms of, uh, of, uh, of her mother. I never cried when she was, when she lived, because it was so important to her to have her. That day, I cried Ugh. like hell. This law won't make choosing euthanasia easy. All parents and doctors must be in agreement that there's no other option. Most importantly, the child must be conscious and able to make the decision themselves. The author of this bill says, in many cases, this law is the most humane option. This is about the possibility for everyone to choose at some point not to accept this suffering and to say at a certain point, this is enough. And consider that one can finally ask to die so that the suffering stops. It's in the end a freedom. Critics suggest there is no way a child is able to make a life or death decision of this magnitude. Elsie saw her nine-year-old boy die of cancer in Belgium. In the end, Rafael was a very tall boy. I'm sorry, I forgot to bring a photo. Very strong. And then he got very skinny, very sick. But he was very, uh, in the beginning, he was very angry because he was sick. Rafael had a cancer. The doctor said to me, we can nothing to do with Rafael. We have done everything we can because we cannot operate him again. We are going to die in the operation. But she rejects wholeheartedly the idea of euthanasia for children and expresses some doubt as to the real driving force behind this law. Cancer is very expensive to the government. Yes. But please don't touch children. No. No. I'm sorry. I think it's euthanasia is just a financial uh, solution for them. Palliative care for the young in Belgium is extensive and well-funded. Psychologists, doctors and nurses work to provide the most comfortable surroundings possible. Very sick kids. So we might have chronic kids. In the last year, in the, the last six months, we also had two kids who died here. These children suffer from serious illnesses. Many of them are fatal, and it's in places like this in Brussels, Villa Indigo, that they can come and receive the support, medical care, and much-needed respite from a fight many of them will never walk away from. Nurse Sonia de Velter has treated over 1,000 terminally ill children and admits she's concerned about the direction this legislation is taking society. In the first version of the euthanasia law, they spoke about uh, children with a Down syndrome and also about great premature children and um, anorexia, children with an an anorexia. And so that's a big problem. In other words, is this an isolated law designed to help those who can't bear to live anymore or a slippery slope to make human life disposable? Margaret Howell in Brussels, RT.